What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Next Level Teaching. I'm your host, Jeremy <laughs> Anderson, here with my super dope co hostess with the most is Miss Tori Rodriguez, aka T Rod. What's up? Hey, Jay. How, How are you feeling? You? Uh. Oh, I was about to turkey it with you. Come oh, on. Oh, yeah, no, I got you. I switched it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, how are you? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Super excited for my man, Dr. Craig Lockhart. Yeah. How are you hey, feeling, Doc? Right. Yeah. Good. good. Feeling great. Feeling great. Well, good. We're glad to have you. Well, thanks for coming up all this way. Thank you. Quite a drive. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it's uh, worth it. we it's were worth it. chatting before uh, we started on here, y'all. But he is from um, Middle Georgia. Yeah, there we go. Um, so it was a little bit of a drive, but your girl went to Valdosta State, for those of you that don't know. So I made my way through um, that area quite often yeah. for a couple of years, uh, at least once a month, honestly. <laughs> your yeah. girl drove back and forth way too much. But um, yep. thank you for joining us and um, superintendent. Yes. 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 Superintendent um, Dooley County School System. Wow. Man. I mean, that is just, I can't wait to hear like the, the progression all through yes. all of it and kind of how, yes. um, how you got there and what it's been like in each different stage. I'm kind of excited to hear about that. Yeah. Um, but before we get there, I want to know, um, I guess where it all kind of started. How did you get into education? How long have you been in education? Um, and what kind of made you want to? to get into education. Okay, well, first of all, guys, thank you for having me here today. For sure. Uh, when I think back, how did I get here today in this very seat? Uh, I I first found a, a love for education. I was in the seventh grade, uh, okay. and I had, a, I had a male teacher. Hmm. This was my first male teacher hmm. in my entire school career. Wow. Um, a white male teacher... But he treated me just like everybody else wow. in the classroom. Yeah. And, and I, there, it was just something so different about that. And it's so important for our children to have people that can represent them in yes. the classroom. Yeah. Having male, female teachers of all different races, of all backgrounds. Because yeah. everybody needs someone they can identify right. with. Absolutely. Right. And so he was just so caring. He made sure that he was friendly, but not my friend. That's so, it right so there. There were, okay. there were boundaries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was structure. Yep. So so I said one day, you know, I think this is what I want to do. I want to be like Mr. Callier. I want to be a teacher. So um, so then, of course, you get a little bit older. And yeah. so by the time I was in high school, I deviated from that. I said, nah, let's go ahead and become a physician. And, mm-hmm. and so I went and got a biology degree. And, and so I decided I want to become a physician. But then after doing an internship in a medical office, after I saw the blood, I said, no, <laughs> this is not for me. And so I, and, and the reason why I point that out, right. it's important that children get a chance to experience Explore, yeah. what yeah. they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. We think we know what we want to do, but internships and, and workforce experiences yeah. are critical yeah. for, for young people. Absolutely. So again, I, I ended up going back to my first First true love, which which was education, and so I'm from a very small rural area, uh, Taylor County, uh, Taylor County, Georgia, and so very very small. We had one traffic light. Uh, that we got in 1998. Mm-hmm. So oh, no wow. McDonald's, you know, okay. so yeah. very, very small. Okay. And so, but I went back there to start teaching a lot of great stories there. But then I decided that I want to, to advance a bit. So I moved here uh, to DeKalb County. Okay. And so I was a middle school teacher. I think you were a middle school yep. teacher, yes, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I math. was a middle school teacher, um, math and science. And so then from there, I became an elementary principal. Uh, And that was back in Taylor County. I went back home for a little while. So after that, I traveled through Bibb County briefly, but spent a lot of my time in Newton County yeah. as a okay. high school principal. That's when I first got introduced to PBIS okay. and uh, working with the PBIS model and being able to to push that forth. And let me ask, yeah. what, what year was that when you were first introduced to PBIS? This was in... 2010. Okay. And I find that so amazing because I'm, I'm traveling to schools now and they're saying, Jeremy, when you come in, can you train our staff on PBIS? And I'm like, yeah, but 
it's 2022. You know, yeah. it's yeah. been around for 12 years, but it's yeah. getting out there. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of that, and I'm going to let you finish, sure. um, but this episode, y'all like my shirt, for those of y'all that's watching <laughs> me, right? This episode is partner is sponsored by our partners at PBIS Rewards. Yeah. So you all know here at Next Level Teaching, we believe in PBIS. Uh, our Next Level Students curriculum aligns with SEL and PBIS. The framework yeah. um, that PBIS represents is amazing. And so um, we are sponsored by them. And so we're excited to have you on. And so and also I'm going to give you a little ago. shout out real okay, quick because okay. Jay is actually uh, the keynote speaker at their conference coming you, up. Nah, she got me uh, blushing, dog. She I, got me blushing. Listen, hey, I, hey. I, I got <laughs> to give you your credit. I, yeah. he, y'all, he uh, spoke last year and it was yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Um, he's going to be speaking again this year. Yeah. Um, so we're super excited. It's on the 13th of June, yeah, correct? June you're 13th speaking? and 14th. It's two days, but yep. I'll be speaking on the 13th. Yeah. So, so we're, yeah, we're, we're really excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you for that. So, so, so 2010, yes. you were introduced to PBI, yes. yes. County, okay. Yeah, take it from there. And so from there, uh, we were able to implement PBIS at the high school level. I didn't think it could be done. High school students, they're, they're different from yeah. elementary mm-hmm. and middle. Absolutely. But we were able to rebrand the, schools, the school. You think about branding Coca-Cola, Starbucks, Apple. They all have something that people just want to buy into. Right. Yeah. So that's what we did. We rebranded the school and the school's Newton High School and, and the mascot was the Rams. Hmm. And we created that's this where my saying. Mama went. Oh, really? Yes, oh, sir. okay. Cool. That cool. is absolutely where my wow. mama went. Okay. Well, uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And so, so with that motto, we came up with we are Rams. We are respectful. We are accountable. We are motivated. We are successful. Mm. We are Rams. Rams rise. And it's stuck. And so from there, we were able to really get a lot of um, attention from even the State Department with what we were doing with PBIS there. And so from that point, I moved over to the central office the corporate world yeah. <laughs> in <laughs> education. And so yeah. I, I became the man, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, so we were doing the central office stuff, deputy superintendent for a while. And ultimately, I now have my own school system um, back near my hometown yeah. in Dooley County. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. So I find it refreshing, Doc, that so many educators and Tori yeah. Valsfitz that we interview, they say, oh, we love the fact that, you know, they say, man, they became educators because they saw on that representation or because that yeah. teacher connected with them or because there was that relationship and that bond. Yeah. So for you to say that you, you went through kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, it wasn't until seventh grade that you had a male teacher. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting, but very problematic. Yes. Yeah. Let's just stay right there for a minute, right? Like, w- what effects would you would do you think that has on young students that don't see that male representation in the classroom? Mm. Uh, it's a very profound effect, especially for students that may be in situations where there may not be a father at, at home. home. Yeah. Right. Uh, for for the boys. And in my particular case, again, it w- this was the first professional male I really had ever mm. spent a significant amount of time around. Yeah. And and so just to see what it was like to to be professional, mm. his, the way he walked, the way he talked, the yeah. way he carried himself, the mm. way he dressed, all of that had a significant impact on me. I would say that for the girls, a same yet different impact right. because they get to see what they should expect out of, of a, a male partner. Yeah. And yeah. so so it's critical that we have that type of um, presence in our schools. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'll say I had the honor of actually working alongside Ryan Manning, our producer, um, my first year teaching ever. Um, he was the science teacher next to me. I was math. He was oh, science. Okay. And we literally shared a door next to each okay. other. And um, to watch him carry himself, literally as you're talking, all I can think of is Manning walking around in, in his suit every single day at school, hmm. carrying himself with just this uh, sense of professionalism. Um, but also he was able to have relationships with some kids that I wasn't able to have hmm, as right, a woman. And right. I think back on one student in particular that um, – really struggled. And he was a a Hispanic student. And quite often in the Hispanic world, Mm -hmm. the woman is the one that just takes care 
yeah. of the man. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I felt like as hard as I was working for that student and as much as of my time as I was giving to him, like he was the kid to me that I felt like I was pouring myself into. He didn't have the respect for me mm-hmm. as a Hispanic woman. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it strictly had everything to do with what he had seen because he lived with his mother and that's it. Right. He didn't have a dad around right. and he saw his mother date these men that were not treating him well. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so that's how he thought he could treat me. Mm-hmm. And yet he completely respected Ryan. Wow. And it really goes to show how important it is to have men in the classroom for so many different reasons, wow. right? Like it's also wow. supporting us yeah. mm-hmm. as female teachers mm-hmm. as well, because there are sometimes conversations that you just can't have and vice versa, right? right? right there are some sure. conversations that Manning could not have like dress code stuff with some female students and he would just send them right over to me, right? right, right, right? right, right. But I think it's so important to have that balance because we're 50-50, yeah, right? right? So right. why is it not 50-50 with teachers out there as well is the question. Um, and it's so important. If I can add to that, Tori, I love to see coaches. I love, mm, Typically a coach is a male go coach. Is, they have a great role in, and we definitely need them. But children also need to see True male teachers who are academically focused right. and academically balanced right. because all of our boys are not going to be athletes. So right. we right. need to make sure it's right. extremely well rounded and that we we actively recruit men into the profession because they're definitely needed. Yeah. And I think it's you know, and when you look at when the educational system first started, I'm, I'm gonna play I hate the term devil's advocate, but when you look at when the educational system started years, 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 years ago, it was like the man was out doing the labor. Right. And the woman were back taking care of the family in the classroom in that right. setting. And so we don't do things the way we did a hundred years ago. Yeah. Right. But unfortunately, when it comes to the school system, Absolutely. like that's the same thing that we see. So it's refreshing whenever I see a male, and especially a male of, of color, yeah. that's in the educational space, in that in that realm of building the relationship, teaching, et cetera, because you have some students who are going to connect with that male, and they need that male for that influence because maybe they don't have that father at home. Right. And the same thing with the young girls. Right. It's just like, you, I might not have that dad at home, but I need to have the other male representation. Correct. Did you ever when you first started um in your educational experience did you plan on being a superintendent or were you just like i just want to be the best teacher i wanted to be the best teacher and 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 that's a great question because it that being a superintendent was never on my radar okay. uh, <laughs> and, never and, on and, and i i, enjoyed, I love to hear that though as a teacher well, yeah. well and, and and because of that that's why I always tell people I am a teacher first, yeah. a principal forever. Yeah. I, I mm. don't intend to ever forget what it's like to be in the classroom yeah. or what it's like to run a school because yeah. they're all very different. Yeah. You have to stay connected. You have to stay grounded. Uh, and and I, would, I would add that in trying to stay connected, uh, I go to the classrooms. I read to the students. I love going out, you know, hanging out with the, the pre-K, kindergarten, especially yeah. doing right, that. Right, but right, what right. I've also started doing is I'll go to our high school and I'll help direct morning traffic. I love that. And mm. so because, again. Even now. Right now, yeah, like a week ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, again, we try to make sure we do that. Yeah. Well, and you honestly beat me to my question before I could even ask it, honestly, because I think that there are a lot of times times where where as teachers we feel unheard sometimes yeah. right and we feel like there's this disconnect especially yeah. when you start to get to bigger districts yeah. right huge right. districts like the one that um that I'm in like it it's just what what do they know about what I'm going through? Right. right. And so the fact that you're willing to get out there and direct traffic, yeah. which is something that goodness knows we all, yeah. no, nobody likes morning duty. Let's yeah. be really real <laughs> right. about it. Nobody likes morning car rider duty, right. right? No one likes bus duty. And so the fact that you're willing to get into the trenches to understand and still feel what we're feeling, I think is something that teachers want to hear. Cause I was literally just about to ask you, 
So from a teacher's perspective, we want to know, what are you doing as a superintendent? Right. And you just did it for me. And I think that that's so important. Right, right. And what's crazy is it's not even that that you're, that you're willing to get out here and, and do some of those other jobs, but you've accomplished, you've accomplished some major achievements yeah. on the district level. Can we talk about that? I saw that smile. <laughs> I, I, I want to bring it up because I'm proud of what you've done. Yeah. So can you, can you talk about and acknowledge some of the district achievements? Because I need them to put it into perspective, like all these different things you've been able to accomplish and experience. But it's like the same time, but you still make time to go out in the middle of the day or in the and morning be time about and it. be humble about that. Go for yeah. it. So um, when I inherited Dooley County School System, we had a lot of things that were um, that were challenging. And, uh, we we were worried about our accreditation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had some governance issues with our school board, and that was probably the biggest issue. Yeah. There was a lot of micromanagement. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of a lot of things were going wrong with the school board to a point where Governor Nathan Deal he actually had to remove the board and wow. we had to get a brand new board put in wow. place. Wow! So when that happens, oh, it really issues. shakes the faith of the community. Yeah. And so um, one of the challenges for me was trying to restore that faith. So uh, I had our board um, engage in a lot of professional development, a lot of training, so that they could know exactly how how they yeah. should function, how they should behave. Right. And, and when I use the word behave, you think about what a teacher expects of students yeah, and how a teacher should treat students and how students should treat teachers and how administrators should teach teachers and vice versa. We're modeling proper behavior at every level. Facts. So the board has to model proper behavior for everyone else to follow. Yes. So with that, we had a lot of professional training, and that allowed for us to receive several awards from the Georgia School Boards Association, the mm-hmm. governing mm-hmm. entity that works with all of our boards. Um, in 2019, we received the Quality School Board um, achievement, but then we were able to advance it to our exemplary board, which is the highest level, um, exemplary board achievement in 2020 and in 2020. 21, they received the Leading Edge Award due to something that we're doing with teachers trying to, to bring more value to their uh, to their certificates and trying to give mm-hmm. them like an in-class promotion. They received the Leading Edge Award for that. And I recently received the Gale Vision Award in 2022 uh, just for the, uh, mm-hmm. the advocacy we're trying to do at the state level to make sure that the rural school systems are heard. Oh, that right there. Let's stop and talk about that right there. Because I think coming from someone that was born and raised in the metro Atlanta area, um, but then going and doing my student teaching in South Georgia, a little bit more rural of an area, um, and to to see the difference um, between, uh, I mean, I, I remember even walking into a classroom as a freshman in college and uh, it was English 101, honestly. And the teacher said, we're going to write this in MLA format. And someone said, what's MLA format? And I'm like, how the heck you get in a college without knowing what MLA format (laughs) is? And so I think that that's one thing though, that is important is making sure that, that what one district is getting, every district is getting and, and that, they're being provided what they need. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Uh, and, and education knows no zip code. Yes. Everyone hmm. should have the same opportunity yeah. uh, that, that anybody else in the state of Georgia or the nation has um, available to them. So we're trying to make sure that that's there. In rural districts, a lot of times the resources have not been there. Yeah. So the way I have approached Dooley, thanks to my experiences in all these other places, yeah. is... I try to run the district as if it is a metropolitan progressive district. Mm. So it's all about expectations. If you believe that you are great, you operate in greatness. So that's what we're trying to do. I love it. That's I love beautiful. it. Tell me about the AASA conference. Were you there in Nashville? I was. Yeah. Okay, y'all been doing your homework. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So recently, I graduated from the Urban Superintendent's Cohort. It was in partnership with Howard University and um, the you? AASA uh, organization, and that's the National Network for Superintendents. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so I took a year-long course. And I was able to get with thought leaders from across the nation. And our focus was on equity, Hmm. Hmm. trying to make sure that every student 
was getting exactly what they need. We meet them at their respective levels yeah. uh, and, and making sure that all children get the best opportunity to succeed. So that was a great experience. Yeah. Uh, so I graduated from that class. It actually was 2021, but the pandemic um, right. caused a lot of things to shut down. So we were recognized this past February. That's wow. amazing. Yeah, I was there. Um, I spoke. I did a session specifically on equity and diversity okay. and opportunities for superintendents as well and uh, it was a really great experience okay. yeah. man so small you world. so yeah, yeah small world for sure small worlds yeah, over small here world. Yeah. wow yeah. so that that is that is impressive what advice would you give right to an educator whether they're in a big city or a rural or urban town like what advice would you give to an educator that's just starting to kind of get flowing you know when you meet with those that are kind of new in your district you know what's some advice that you would give them i tell every new teacher uh, and and even if they are a teacher that has a few years under their belt but mm-hmm. then they're moving over to another district it, it is know thy student every mm. student is different yeah and a lot of times we want as a teacher we want to try to go middle of the road because again you have some 20 maybe up to 30 students all at one time And you can do that to a degree, but how you interact and how you connect with them is a deeply personal, Mm -hmm. deeply human thing. So what you say to one, you can say, oh, you knucklehead, and both of you will start laughing. Mm -hmm. And then you say, oh, you knucklehead to the next one. Next thing you know, you're sitting in the principal's office and and there's a mad parent (laughs) over there. So so you have to know who every child is because to the parent that is the most important person in the world to them you have to know every child and if you can get to know every child and treat them with the level of respect that they that they need then i think you'll be okay i love it i love it amazing amazing tour well i i was just thinking about how you were talking about things kind of changed for you for the pandemic right like you were talking about how your recognition had to come a little bit later. And so I want to, I want to talk about what that change has been like, um, for education as a whole. Um, but also for you guys, kind of how you guys navigated through that, but what, what does education look like now? And I don't want to say post pandemic cause we're not post pandemic, but, but post online right, hybrid yeah, right. that 2020, 2021 year, that was just so weird. What does it look like now for you guys? So, the first thing I'd say is that I would want to want to give honor uh, to the hundreds of thousands who died during the pandemic yeah. um, uh, due to COVID related illness. And that's uh, and, and the many more across the country, across yeah. the world. Excuse yeah. me. In giving honor to them, I would then want to say that the pandemic gave us opportunity to press the reset button mm. on a lot of things that we were doing. Yeah. Education in particular has been one of the slower moving industries to yes. adapt to change. Wow. Yes. Wow. And so so one thing that happened with us is that we were immediately able to make our school system one to one student to laptop yeah. or to a technological asset yeah. um, within the district. So every student now has a device where I am and you'll find that in many of the school systems now that we all pretty much have access to devices for for our students so that was a really good thing we when our students were home we were able to find ways to actually deliver our our meals to the students put them on buses and send them out out, make sure that they were being taken care of now since we've been returning we are now um fully in person now Mm -hmm. We are seeing social emotional issues. Yeah, let's go there. Like never before, and, and you're seeing it on TV. There yeah. was always a talk. There was always crime. There was there were always things happening. Yeah, right. but now it feels different, and, and and it's like okay, this is happening because of that isolation, yeah. because Absolutely. of everything that happened during the pandemic. So now we have children coming back in, and they are two years 
I won't say behind, I'll say off. Right. Yes. Okay. From, and so that's a beautiful so, way to put it. So yeah. they're 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 missing something. And so you're seeing that behavior, you're seeing that anxiety, all of that's coming forth. So we've been working really hard on trying to address the mental health needs. Yeah. And PBIS rewards is a part of that process for us. Yeah. 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 You We're, know what? We um it's funny you say that because there are so many schools now that's that was not open to PBIS or other things or just did not pay as SEL much focus. In general. Yeah, but now that because of the pandemic and because of the challenges that we're dealing with and the behavior issues have increased, now there are a lot of schools that's like, okay, let's go back and revisit and see what this looks like. So can you can you hang out with us? I sure can. Yeah, I, we I wanna do we gonna do a part two, right? Oh, perfect. And and we wanna talk specifically on how you've integrated PBIS and how you and your district have been so successful in implementing PBIS and PBIS rewards because everything we're about is all about student achievement. Yeah. So hang out with us, man. Thank you all for hanging out today with us. Um, next week, he'll yep. be back. Dr. Yep. Craig Lockhart, uh, superintendent of Dooley County Schools, will be back with part two of his interview, and we're going to go deeper into PBIS and PBIS rewards and the things that you can do to take your school and classroom to the next level. See y'all next week. Bye, guys.